Ah, the land of Westeros. The drama and excitement in Game of Thrones is one we constantly crave. We know it so well and hate our short visits. We long to visit George R. R. Martin's magical and terrifying world and pretty soon we will get to, with the upcoming season of HBO's hit TV series. In order to refresh your memories, why don't we take a look at some of the secrets hidden in our favorite show? No. <laughs> But before we get started, make sure you click on that subscribe button to stay up to date with all of CBR's videos. I come before you to confess my treason. Stark Soccer. The world-renowned HBO show Game of Thrones is known for its intense plot and shocking moments. The show and its books are also known for killing off our favorite characters. Look at it and see what happens to traitors. He promised to be merciful. I was. I gave him a clean death. Thrones has definitely taught us the harsh life lesson of losing things we love, because in George R. R. Martin's world, no one is safe. For you seasoned fans, you know that not even main characters are safe. Mr. Martin has no mercy, and the show's production team stays true to these ideals. She looks sharp. In one of TV's most shocking scenes ever aired, the principal character of the first season, Ned Stark, is beheaded. But as we mourned the loss of a favorite character and tried to find our minds once more, Sean Bean found a different way to cheer himself up. The actor took part in a Reddit AMA and answered some fan questions, one of which asked if it was strange for Bean to see his own head lying around, to which he responded that it was a bit strange and creepy and they just kicked it around like a football. Well, we're glad to see Sean Bean was such a good sport about his character's death, although it seems he took the sport part too literally who are you who would you like me to be shay's previous career sibel kakili is known for playing shay in game of thrones shay is the beautiful prostitute turned love interest of fan favorite character Tyrion lannister the german-born actress gained notoriety in 2004 with the film head on which won her several awards for her performance including the lola for best actress head on also won the prestigious golden bear at the berlin film festival sibel has gone on to star in several other films and garnered more awards for her acting chops so what secret could this talented and gorgeous actress be hiding? Well, Sibel used to go by the name Delara and had a brief stint in the adult entertainment field. Pretty shocking, right? And she was asked to play the role of a prostitute on Thrones. But Sibel Kakili is only one of many adult film stars in the show. Jessica Jensen and Samantha Bentley are both adult stars that have played rather experienced women in the show. For those of you who are screaming, typecasting, worry not, for Sibel is exploring other opportunities and roles, like one on the German TV show Tatort. Sibel has said that her past doesn't dictate her future. And we can agree more. Is that sufficient? Quite sufficient. Thank you. Very good, then. That's settled. Good day. Give me that. Fake meat. It goes without saying that Game of Thrones makes a lot of money, and so they spend a lot of money. Their production value is tip top, and it shows. From costuming to props, it's all amazing, right? We are totally immersed in George R.R. Martin's world. As with most films and TV shows, they sometimes make fake food, in addition to the real one. There have been times, of course, when real meat and other foods have been used, and boy does it look good. But what about those that don't eat meat? For those who don't know, the talented actor Peter Dinklage, who plays Tyrion Lannister, is a vegetarian in real life. He's even done a PETA video and reveals that he doesn't eat meat because he loves animals and doesn't want them to be heard on his behalf. Peter Dinklage just gets better and better, doesn't he? Bread and two of this little fish and bacon burnt black. So whenever Tyrion is required to eat meat with his family, the production department provides alternative fake meat or tofu dishes that look like meat. How awesome is that? She'll never keep it down. Sticky blood. Speaking of fake meat and production value, let's reminisce about one of the coolest looking scenes in the show. Remember the scene when Daenerys must eat the heart of a horse? The scene itself is totally unforgettable because of the bright red heart and of course the mess that comes with it as she chows down on it. You'll be happy to know that no horses were harmed during this scene. The heart was totally fake. But what was it made of, you might be wondering? It was a concoction of pasta, gummy, sugar, lots of jam, and fake blood. That just sounds like a sticky hot mess, doesn't it? Just just imagine how poor Amelia Clark felt. I mean, we'd have totally cringed. When Amelia Clark visited Jimmy Kimmel Live, she revealed to Jimmy that the situation got a bit too sticky. Getting covered head to toe in sticky fake blood was bound to have issues, one of which involved her getting stuck to herself and other stuff. Now that just sounds uncomfortable, but not as much as when she confessed that she also got stuck to the toilet. Her struggle was definitely real, but at least the scene looked absolutely amazing. I am Daenerys Stormborn of House Targaryen of the Blood of Old Valyria. I am the 
the dragon's daughter. And I swear to you. Daenerys's gold mane. Speaking of the great Khaleesi, she's definitely a fan favorite. The queen goes by many names. Daenerys Stormborn of the House Targaryen, first of her name, the unburnt Queen of the Andals, Khaleesi of the Great Grass Sea, Breaker of Chains, and Mother of Dragons. Wow. Wonder if we can fit all that on one Starbucks coffee cup. The Great Queen has many amazing qualities, and among them is her great beauty. In the novels, Daenerys is supposed to have purple eyes and long silver white hair. We let the purple eyes go because contacts all the time can get pretty impractical and uncomfortable. Well, at least they kept her long, almost white hair. The hair has become so iconic that there was even a new deep sea slug that was named after the Queen because of its similarities to her blonde hair. The Tritonia Khaleesi. Actress Amelia Clark's hair is a lovely chocolate brown. We imagine the bleaching process to get her hair that white can be pretty damaging. The show's creative team agreed, and so you'll be happy to know that Amelia's hair was never dyed for the role. Putting on her wig took about two and a half hours each time, but it looks flawless. We have no execution in the Eerie. Life is more elegant here. Open the moon door. Moon Door. When we hear Moon Door, we already know that it means a terrifying outcome. But for those who don't know, the Moon Door is something you'd probably see in your nightmares. The door is actually a gaping hole in the Veil of Aaron, which is used as an elegant solution to any issues. Well, if you think falling to your death and being shredded apart by rocks below is elegant, then yes, it's very elegant. Then you will leave. By one door or the other. It's estimated that the Vale of Aaron moon door is over 2,000 feet high, which is quite a ways up if you ask us. As with anything involving fandoms, there are researchers who have dedicated time to figuring out the probability of survival in this fictionalized trapdoor scenario. But we're just gonna go ahead and not expect any character that's gone through the moon door to come back. You can take comfort, however, in the fact that the terrifying pit that leads to a watery grave is actually only about one meter deep. Yep, Sophie Turner has confirmed that the hole has a green screen floor with a crash mat. That definitely sounds a lot less scary and dare we say even a little fun why'd you read so much look at me and tell me what you see Hitting the books. When you have a hit series based off an equally popular book series, you'd think that everyone involved in the project has read the books, right? You would expect the actors portraying the characters to want to read the books, as they provide more insight for their roles. But guess what? Almost none of the actors have read Martin's novels. Maisie Williams, who plays Arya, said she found out that her character goes blind after fans mentioned it to her. Likewise, Charles Dance, who plays Tywin Lannister, was told about the death of his character by a fan. However, Dance has a great reason for not having read the books. He said that they're filming adaptations, not the books themselves. It's sometimes counterproductive for actors to go back to the book and point out scenes that are missing or lines that they want to say. Well, we can't really argue with that solid logic. But cheer up, fans. There's someone special in the Game of Thrones actor circle that has read the books. Can you guess who she is? The lovely Gwendolyn Christie, who plays Knight Brienne of Tarth, has read the books. This, along with her role of Captain Phasma in the Star Wars series, just makes her so awesome. Seriously, can she get even more lovable? He's not going to die. I know it. Two stocks are hard to kill. The butt that knew nothing. There are a few things that we know about John, but most importantly, we know that he knows nothing. What if we told you that John does know something? Something very important that we don't know. Any guesses? We know that in the books, John is supposed to be much younger, but the show's production team decided to age up the entire cast. Obviously, Kit Harrington, who plays Jon Snow, is not a child. However, there's still a sweet innocence about him, which he definitely brings to the character. His naivete and lack of knowledge of the world is pointed out constantly by Ygritte, who reminds him that he knows nothing. Nothing. Tension between them builds, and eventually they have their romantic time in a cave. There's one moment in which John jumps into a rock pool, rocking only his birthday suit, and fans caught a glimpse of the actors behind. Only, it wasn't really Kit's butt. We hate to have to break your hearts, but this was actually a body double. Kit actually broke his ankle and was unable to film some of his scenes. We know you're probably disappointed, but at least Kit Harrington and Rose Leslie, who plays Egret, are a real-life couple now. Enjoy your small victories while you can, fans. But maybe it would be better to wait. Original Garbage Game of Thrones is HBO's most watched series, and for those of us who are fans, we totally understand why. We just can't get enough of the drama, action, lies, betrayal, costumes, and everything else in between. Anyone who watches the show will agree that the show's addicting. Much like Lay's potato chips, you can't have just one. But what if we told you that this wonderfully crafted story wasn't always so grand? We know it's hard to believe, but Sophie Turner, who plays Sansa Stark, has stated that the pilot episode was totally bad. I can't tell you how touched I am. 
or your concern for my welfare. Even showrunners Dan Weiss and David Benioff have confessed that the original pilot was such rubbish that they had to do massive reshoots and recastings. But what was so bad about it exactly? Well, among the many problems was Jennifer Ely's performance as Catelyn Stark, the overwrought death of John Aaron, and the difficulty they had establishing that Cersei and Jaime were brother and sister. Whatever John Aaron knew or didn't know, it died with him. They decided to rethink their strategies and change everything, reshooting about 90% of the pilot. That's a pretty big redo they did. But the finished product was gold. They successfully introduced a vast and extensive world with plenty of characters and drama. Thank the gods for second chances. It's the last thing you'll see before you die. Walk of shame. Let's be completely honest. Are we ever really ready for this show? No one can ever prepare you for the emotional roller coaster that is every episode. Season 5 was no exception. We saw Lena Headey's character, Cersei Lannister, completely stripped of her mighty persona. She was locked in a dungeon and made to repent for her sins. It was shocking to see such a fearsome and ruthless character be so diminished. I am the queen! I am the queen! I'm not but we knew she would come back even more ruthless than before. We were not prepared, however, for the High Sparrow's plan for Cersei's penance. This mighty matriarch has to strip down naked before the eyes of gods and men. And walked through the kingdom. All the while, one of the Sparrow's subordinates rang the bell behind her and chanted Shame. The act was so incredibly humiliating, it only seemed to fuel Cersei. Much like Snow's butt, Cersei's body was actually a body double, Rebecca Van Cleef, who stood in for her. Lena wanted a double because she didn't think that she could contain and stay true to the Cersei character if she had to be naked for three days. It's a tough job and a very difficult scene, so we're glad it worked out in the end and culminated into such an intense moment. The Night's Watch will ride in force against the Wildings the White Walkers, or whatever else is out there. Well, there you have it. So which secret shocked you the most? How many of these secrets did you superfans already know? Are there any juicy secrets that we may have missed? Please let us know in the comments section below. We'd love to hear them. While you're here, if you haven't already, don't forget to subscribe. If you liked our video, don't forget to give it a big thumbs up and share it with your friends. Thanks for watching.